the opinion that it's not worth it or that it's not worth the trouble, that's what I wholeheartedly disagree with because it's not for the convenience of the departments. It's to serve the public because the public deserves accountability and transparency. And it also protects public funds for us to know that reports are accurate because then it prevents a lawsuit later. Because a recurring theme here is that all these department heads say, are, are saying that they're reaching out to you for guidance, for help, and that you're not responding. And they're not getting anything back from your department. And that's why they're going ahead and doing these. Because I think the Fortuna Union High School District also did a vote of no competence. Yeah, that is another friend of a certain supervisor. Uh, is this Virginia Bass? No. Rex Bone. Mm -hmm. uh, this friend I've never met or spoken with or worked with. Uh, and he also made accusations that I disproved pretty quickly with evidence. But it doesn't matter. They still get to do whatever they want to do. And even though I provide evidence to Ryan Burns, who was the only one asking at the time, he still didn't report my side. And whenever I do make presentations to the board that are detailed with spreadsheets and data, Ryan Burns reports it as intricate spreadsheets or got getting in the weeds or like just dismisses the information that I'm sharing. Uh, what you'll see in the 2021 summary, or it, they actually released it for the public because Ryan Burns got a copy of it before everyone else did. Of the whole report? No. there just No one summary. has seen this whole report. It's just a summary. A one one or two one and a half page summary um it says that majority agreed that that was the case so they interviewed all these people who are already saying that this is happening and because all of them agree they're sustained there is no evidence and also i would challenge this investigator that they are not qualified to make the determination that I've increased workloads that have uh, unnecessarily, what, whatever they said, costs money or something. Um, yeah, caused financial losses to the county. You know what great change I made is I required receipts. I require documentation. I require reconciliations. Yes, that's going to mean that you have to do more work if you've never done these things before. If you've never had to provide receipts, if you've never had to reconcile your claims, if you've never had to gather backup but now you do, yes, that is additional work. But the opinion that it's not worth it or that it's not worth the trouble, that's what I wholeheartedly disagree with because it's not for the convenience of the departments. It's to serve the public because the public deserves accountability and transparency. And it also protects public funds for us to know that reports are accurate because then it prevents a lawsuit later. This is something that people aren't hearing either. Is, you know, DHHS, I'll say them because she keeps writing fund letters. Um, she says, I've cost her so much money because she can't claim for reimbursement. For example, this $300,000 that recently was in the news that they said they needed from the general fund because they couldn't claim it. So first of all, the general fund has always been fronting DHHS cash because their funds were historically always negative. The cash has to come from somewhere. It's the general fund. Second, the amount, that $300 that they're saying they lost, there is no proof that they've lost any money. And even in the staff report, it says that those are estimates that they got in an email from the CAO. There's no official letter from the feds or from the state that says, hey, county, we're not going to give you $300,000. And what they're also saying is they couldn't claim it for reimbursement because it hadn't posted. How can you lose money that you didn't have to spend? Why would you feel entitled to get reimbursed for something you just said you didn't pay? That's the big story about their $300,000 is that they didn't have to pay this so they didn't get to reimburse it. And is it even real money? I don't know because they got it in an email from the CAO. I'm up against a lot of misinformation to begin with. And then most people 
don't really understand the function of the auditor controller or the way that government financing works. Yeah. Do you feel like there's some sort of concerted effort against you? Yes, and I don't think that's a secret. Mm -hmm. I think they've been very vocal about it. Um, Is it because you're not willing to play ball or not willing to... Why? Why? Where would all of that... Why would all of these department heads and the Board of Soups and these people... Why would they not want you to be in office? Several reasons. Um, they've been trying... Not all of them. Uh, yeah, it's primarily Rex Bone and Virginia Bass are well, your so antagonists. The, the first time Rex Bone ever saw me was when I was the assistant and I went to ask them for help. And immediately said he would have shit himself and fired somebody. It hasn't gotten any better since. Um, so he's had something against me since before I took office. I didn't even know who he was. We've, we don't have, we don't run in the same circles. I don't know anything about him. He doesn't really know anything about me. But he's had it out for me since then. Um, same thing with Virginia Bass. I've never worked with them prior to working at the county. But they decided early on that they did not want me there. Now, um, have you heard about the state controller's office and their investigation? Into you? Into the county. No. Um, they, I think it was in November that they sent a letter and they were going to send a team up here to investigate why the 1920 financial transactions report hadn't been completed. And they were going to determine whether it was because of incompetence, which is what a lot of people at the county were trying to suggest, or if it was because the county did not have adequate internal controls to allow for the auditor controller to file the report. They told me what all of the complaints were, right? When they came and investigated, they did an actual investigation where they heard people's perspectives and then they asked for proof. And what they said to me was, what we've been told is that you did not train departments or let them know what it is that they needed to turn in. And I said, yes, I did. They said, prove it. I sent them 60 different pieces of evidence, 60 different trainings that I hosted countywide, specific to departments and instructional manuals. I've created guides with screenshots and pictures and colors I've hosted trainings uh, in person. We, I rented the Sequoia Conference Center, and there were 70 people that showed up from all departments. I was able to provide the state controller the sign-in sheet so they could see how everyone signed that attended. All of the complainants were on that sign-in sheet. I, showed, I sent them forwarded emails of all of the times I had to send the training guides and the training manuals. I've done my due diligence to train everybody, I just don't know how to make accountants out of people who aren't accountants. And then there's turnover at the departments. So I spend all my time training one person, then they're gone. Now it's a new person. Now I got to train this new person because the department doesn't have processes in place to, for succession planning. If one person leaves, all of the knowledge goes out with them. They don't, what did they find in the report? They haven't issued their final report yet. Their work, they're going to send us a draft. What I understand from my communications with the state controller is that I was able to prove that I've trained these departments, that I've communicated what the expectations are. Um, their findings are related to the departments. They need to hire accountants to do accounting work or prioritize training their staff in accounting so that they'll know how to do accounting work. I, I mean, just recently on the Facebook, there was a former department head who is currently very active and vocal about how much she doesn't support me, where she said that in her experience working with me, I never responded to her. I would take months to respond to her or sign her claims for funding. And so I was able to post screenshots of every single time that we had these conversations about her claims. And the longest I ever took to respond to her was two days. The quickest, two minutes. And she's over there saying months. That seems to be another recurring theme from a lot of department heads is that you're not responding to emails and it's hard to get a hold of you. Did you get a hold of me? Yeah. 
I mean, it, to be fair, I had to I had to work a little bit to get you on, but mm-hmm. I just assume that's because I mean, this is a podcast. I assume that if I was a department head, it'd be a little easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have my cell phone number. If you can't reach me by email, department heads know they can call me. They can text me. We're all on Facebook. They know how to reach me. Did she respond when you countered with any of that? No. No. Didn't say anything. Nope. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect or that I'm always right and everyone else is always wrong. What I'm saying is that the characterizations they're sharing with the world about me are not fair. Um, in some cases are completely fabricated. Like, no, I didn't offer you weed. Stop saying that. Um, you got to eat pizza. Don't say I didn't give you pizza. I answered your email. Maybe it wasn't in the first five minutes, but I answered your email. I signed your claim. Your bill got paid. What I need departments to do, I don't know that they ever will, but I would really appreciate if they came out and said, and recognized that even though they're not hearing from me right away, I'm not alone in the department. There's other people there who are actively responding because I can't be everything for everyone. I can't answer every single thing all the time. I delegate. So if they're getting responses from people in the department, then they're getting responses from me. We are we are a team. We are the auditor controller's office. I still don't quite understand why everyone is pointing the finger at you though there with all these allegations with the mm-hmm. with the pizza gate thing with these department heads saying you're not responding with the information around missing payroll and these bills not being paid why i don't get why what is it about you what if is it because you're trying to buck the system or I think one of the reasons why department heads may be resentful of me is because I've had to speak difficult truths about the operations within their departments. I think that when they hear me say things like, cash isn't being protected in this department, this department didn't reconcile this, this department didn't keep track of this, Um, this department didn't send me an invoice to pay, they're taking it very personally and feeling like I am attacking them. I think they're having a hard time recognizing that I am saying this happened, not that person did this. One of, that's funny that you say that because I was just thinking about that. Um, I mean, you've made quite a few claims, mm-hmm. especially with, I believe one of them was DHHS had burned cash and had cash stolen and only reported that to police and not to you that the board of supervisors was illegally taxing growers well that's true that's true yeah they got sued and they lost the court what what about the they lost the board of supervisors lost that Mm -hmm. i have not heard about that yeah the court determined that the county was unlawfully taxing people for measure s They passed an amendment to a voter-approved tax, but that amendment wasn't voter-approved. You can't tax people without their consent, or I guess you can in some places. But because they didn't have voter approval to change the tax, the court said this was wrong, and the county had to refund. And the board had done that intentionally, tried to slip it under the radar, or...? The board acts on the recommendations of their staff. So the board is successful when their staff make good recommendations and when their county council protects them from breaking laws. In this case with the Measure S, the board was trusting their CAO and was trusting their county council that they were allowed to do what they voted to do. And they were not? No. So this is one where I won't blame the board. But just like department heads are responsible for the actions of their department, the board is responsible for the actions of their council and their CAO. What about the claims against DHHS and the cash? Oh, well, that's true. That There's evidence for that. Um, and it's not something that I had to go and find. This is something that 
DHHS staff communicated to us. I learned from them that uh, one of their offices had been broken into and that their petty cash box was stolen along with drugs and medication. Um, I learned from them that there was a police report. They sent me the police report. Um, and the reason I learned from them is because they sent in requests to have their petty cash box replenished. I require receipts. Where are the receipts that prove you need to be replenished? And it took months for them to finally admit that there are no receipts because it was actually stolen. Oh, they didn't want to admit that to you. Mm -hmm. So there's evidence of this. And DHHS knows because they had to tell me. See, that's interesting because one in reading the articles about that, it was painted that there was no evidence, that these were baseless claims you were bringing to the table. Those And I, there was one against Rex um, of just, you know, being a part of the good old boys club, putting pressure on his staff to push things through and fund contracts that weren't approved or something like that. Yeah, that, I mean, I don't have to make baseless claims. I There's evidence of that. I have direct experience. It's even been reported on the Time Standard that I have direct experience with Supervisor Bone abusing his power and trying to push for preferential treatment using his position. Uh, there's email evidence where he delegated, that he told somebody else to email me and ask for the special treatment because Rex Bone wants to deliver a check to his friends. That's, that's the way it was described. And then I said no. And I don't care about his friends. Like, I'm doing my job. Everyone should be his friends, right? We should be treating everybody the same. And Rex Bone replied to my email. So it's he can't even hide behind saying someone else did it in my name. He chose to reply in that email. But you and you have proof of that. Yes. It's it's in the news. You can Google Time Standard. Well, I mean, I'm just going off in the the Board of Supervisors meeting where that was presented. He was playing it off like he was being smeared and that that was, of course, not true. Mm -hmm. And that he, would, he wouldn't do that and that these are all just baseless claims. Yep. Uh, when I said all those things to the board, I got to stand there and say it. Uh, and then they had me sit at the table. So I sat there and I watched as all these department heads lined up to the podium to say that, you know, this is never true. I've never seen this, whatever. And every time any of the supervisors asked if I had proof, yes. Did you take any of that proof there with you? They all already have it. The, n nothing that I said at that meeting is new or something that I haven't shared with these people before. But does the public have that? Does the public have access to any of that information? Um, Yes and no. So the, actually, most of it, yes. I won't say most of it. Yes, and they're going to get it. It's because after I made that presentation to the board, there was a member of the public who turned in a PRA request. PRA stands for Public Records Act. And they asked for all of the documentation related to the claims that I made at that board meeting. And so that will be released? It, it's already been released. I think to date we've released over 120 documents. Um, through that PRA. It takes time because each one has to be reviewed and redacted for confidential information. And it's each individual upload. And it's not like I have a public information officer or a marketing team or a public relations person. I have accountants. So we do our work and then as we're able, then we're doing PRAs too. And so where can people go to find that? Uh, the website is called nextrequest.gov. It's also linked through the Humble County website. They, um, you can see all of the Public Records Act requests that people make of all departments. Is anybody me. reporting on that, that this, uh, these documents are being put out there? Yes. There's a oh, – shoot, I don't remember the website off the top of my head. Uh, the Humble – Oh, shoot. I, can I send that to you later? Yeah, that, that yeah. And I can, oh, I can throw um, it in the description. Thanks. Uh, I know his name is Thomas Edrington. He was sending a lot of PRAs to my office. And I kept wondering, who is this person? Why does he keep PRAing? <laughs> Why, I, don't I have enough to do? Stop PRAing things. Um, and I got to meet him. Uh, and on March 15th, when I went to do my campaign announcement, he helped me with my podium 
He helped me carry my podium up the courthouse steps. It was a very interesting situation. And when I met him, I was like, you're the one. <laughs> you're the guy that's been sending all these PRAs. Um, so he submitted that PRA. He requested that it be made public. One of the things about that next request, you can turn in a PRA, but they won't necessarily publish it to the public. They'll give you the information. Mm -hmm. He requested that his request be made public. And then he also started a website. That's the one that I'm going to send you a link to, where he's linking to all of those documents. Is he a reporter? Um, or just a concerned citizen? Or I don't know if he would call himself a reporter. I know that he has been interested in county politics for a long time be, uh, because he did work with cannabis consulting and he was intrigued by cannabis laws as they were becoming legal or the legalization of marijuana. So I know that's when he started paying attention to what was going on at the county and he's been keeping up since. Hmm. Well, that's good that he's out there doing that. Yeah. I had not heard anything about that. Everything I could find was that, you know, you were throwing out some very serious claims and that everyone that was on the receiving end of that was saying, uh, we were blindsided by this. This is not happening. We don't know where this, this came out of left field. We would have liked to have been, you know, had this information brought to us beforehand because this, what do we say? We, this is nothing. We, we don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. Maybe they forgot. Do you think that? No, <laughs> no, I don't think they forgot. Maybe in some of the, them, for some of them, they might not have known because I work with their staff. So they are, they are directors of their departments. And remember I told you they all have their own fiscal, their own HR. So then they have deputies who act on their behalf with regard to finances. So that's who I work with primarily. When issues come up, like the cash at DHHS, I know that she knows because I met with her and I told her about it. I had a conversation with her about it. That she shouldn't be acting like she doesn't know. We talked. I looked in your eyes. This happened. Um, there was a claim I made about the sheriff's office and how a car... Yeah, it was marked as sold and then resold or something that was donated. Yeah, and the sheriff himself was not there that day, so it was his, one of his his deputy, the one that we work with primarily, who went to the mic, and she was very careful to not say it's not true. If it is true, then we're sorry, and we want to know about it. I felt like that was misleading, because guess who told us? we learned from the sheriff's department that this had happened. And that's one of the documents that's already been released in that PRA to prove it was this department that told us about the vehicle. 